Hello, friends. What's up? I am the the I am the wizard pirate, and I am here to bring you episode twelve of my Crowfall series. Okay, so let's start. Um, Crowfall. If you don't know, and you haven't watched any of my other videos, which I suggest you do. Um, but if you did, if you haven't, um, it's a game created by J. Todd Coleman, who is the creative director of King's Isle, who created Wizard One Hundred One and Pirate One Hundred One, and then left and created Artcraft Entertainment, who is now creating Crowfall. Um, I think pre-alpha testing, I think they said will be happening in late summer, so I think I said that wrong in the last video, or maybe I wrote it down in this video, I'm not really sure. So, I'm going to be going, I missed last week, um, I've just been a little bit lazy, so I've been starting from the Eternal Kingdom Q&A all the way to um, the Founders Update, which was last Tuesday or something like that. And I'm just, I haven't written anything down, but it's really quick, so I'll just do that at the end. So let's get started. Okay, so over to the Eternal Kingdom Q&A. <coughs> Sorry, I have a cold, so I may be sniffling a little bit. Okay, so the Eternal Kingdom stands, um, well, EK stands for Eternal Kingdom, and CW stands for Campaign Worlds. I don't think I'll be using those, um, for any of my videos. I think they kind of sound weird, but that's just my preference. Um, so the crafting and economy system will not only have things for Eternal Kingdoms, but will also have items that you may need for the Campaign Worlds. So it won't, when you craft something in your Eternal Kingdom, it won't just be, like, cosmetic items. You'll also get furniture. Um, but you can, so, but then you can craft, like, swords and equipment for the campaign worlds. Um, Eternal Kingdoms have a lot of common in the dying worlds in ways that, um, in conceptual, like, they'll look alike, and you can kind of do the same things, except not technical and design changes, like, you can't, like, edit the world or anything like that. Um, campaign worlds are the primary purpose for Crowfall, but, um... Artcraft is making possibilities that the Eternal Kingdoms will be big enough so that you can get a good experience without even touching the campaign worlds in the game. So what they're saying by that is that you could just play... Oh, oh that You could just play um, in the Eternal Kingdoms for like a year, and you'd get your money from it because there's so much to do. So if you didn't even touch the campaign worlds, even though that's like their main focus, you know, they'll be able to do that. Um, I think... I kind of want to do a lot more in the Eternal Kingdoms than I do with the housing system in Wizard 101 and Pyre 101. So, I may be spending more of my time there, because I don't know if you can kind of go out of the campaign worlds once you join one. I think so, though. Um, let's see. Where are we now? Um, if you get in a large guild and every one of the players in the guild get a piece of your Eternal Kingdom, they will not need to wait to start placing items. I don't just want to clarify that. I don't know if any of you have questions on it. Um, strongholds do not have a natural tax rate. Um, moving from one Eternal Kingdom to the next will not give you a fee, but Marnox and of the Eternal Kingdoms can set up a free, can set up a system where you have to pay to enter the Eternal Kingdom to view it or sit down stuff, like to go into the Eternal Kingdom itself to make money. Um, so then the next part would be a change to the forms. Um, Artcraft Entertainment has created, or something, I wasn't really positive about the wording of this statement, but a form, I don't think it was a form, but like this little section that they can post in um, for new registers to put questions about the game for the first 30 days they've been registered, or something like that. I'm not positive about that. I was really confused. I think, I don't, I, don't, I wasn't positive. Um, so, how this works is that the forums will be limited to people who aren't backers until the beta tests that they will be needing will come in next year sometime. Um, so I think my guess for right now for the testing would be pre-alpha would um, is in late summer. So that's like August or September, August, September. And then they go into normal alpha in December, maybe like Christmas time because we... That'll be a year after they made the play to the play to crush stuff, um, and then maybe next summer will be the beta. So I probably won't even get to play the game until beta. Um, but maybe I can find someone that I can use footage and watch in Skype or something. So um, yeah, Archtyke update the Senator 
Um, the update really just talked about Lord a little bit, where the ideas of the archetype came from. Um, there's a link in the description, so you guys can view that. I will put it in. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, for the economy, FAQ, or fact, or whatever, I haven't done this one, so there's no video I can bring you to to see the whole thing, so I'm just doing it all right now. Let's see, I need to blow my nose. Okay. Sorry, I feel like this really bad cold, so the mucus is all getting up in my face. Okay. So the two types of resources in Crowfall are resources used for crafting and ones that are used for conquest, so like battling and stuff like that. You can get the materials for from the environment from certain monsters, like, um, I guess the zombies, I guess, I don't know what they call them, or places in the worlds like quarries, lumber mills, and mines, which are called, which are considered points of interest. Other points of interest could be something like strongholds, temples, and graveyards. The closest models of crafting systems would be something like EVE Online. EVE Online. Um, I've never played EVE Online or watched a video on it or anything, so I don't know really what to say about that. Um, you can get, you can be a person in the game who just crafts like other for other people. I think this happens in World of Warcraft. I've heard of that, but I'm not positive. Um, this would be a way to bring back crafting, like. It was multiple years ago in MMOs where they just have people who are known for just crafting certain things and you just go to their house and say, hey, give me a sword or whatever, and they craft one for you or whatever. Um, so every character in the game is able to craft right from the beginning, but players can get crafting recipes or whatever you want to call them from discipline, runestones, or other things in the game. Crowfall recipes are not strict, so you... So this will lead to a larger amount of exploration in the crafting system. You can, when combining various types of ores, you will either get pure metal or metal alloys. Um, alloys are what they call a super fancy subcomponent. Um, in crafting recipes, you can buy any type of item. Then what? In crafting recipes, you can use any type of item that you need. They need. So it's saying you need three pieces of metal to make an iron chest plate or whatever they want to call them. You can put um, two pure metals and one alloy and it just changes up the little the effects I think a little bit. Each recipe is basically needs you to have a certain crafting skill to make it. You can craft the item without the recipe but there's a fairly low chance of it actually being successful craft. So if you want to create a staff, let's say a magical staff, I don't know if that's a weapon, it probably is for like a wizard or whatever they're calling it, confessor I think they're calling it. Um, if you're doing it right from the beginning it could just, you know, not work and you just wasted all that material. Or it could work and just be like a very, it wouldn't be a very strong one or something like that. Getting the crafting skill for that certain staff or wand or whatever will allow you to reduce the chance of the failed craft and increase the quality of the item itself. Items. Items like weapons will take small amounts from damage when it is used in battle, so just by using an arrow or, or a bow or something like that. But if you die, it will take a large amount of damage, so if you keep dying over and over, you'll slowly lose all your weapons. So you want to make sure that you have a good strategy so you don't die as often, which is totally... That's going to happen to me more than I want it to be. Let's take the time. Eight minutes. Perfect. Um, so now over to the Founders Update. It's called Founders Update Under the Surface. So it says, um, to put it simply, things are going along great. Um, even though it may look a bit quiet outside. Um, so, uh, we're working on the Core Comet as our first milestone. I keep getting mucus in my nose. I need to... Uh... God. Okay. Allergies. I mean, am I right? It just doesn't go away. Uh, any VIP membership item included in the Kickstarter 2050 package will be in the form of transferable monthly VIP tickets. Um, you can't transfer these tickets unless they have a registered in crowfall.com and have an account that has purchased a copy of the game, which would be a contributor, a higher pledge package in the Kickstarter or whatever. 
uh, the gift recipient will need to have two-factor authentication enabled, um, and that's coming soon. Third, you should be aware that starting with the 2016 packages, it is likely that new bundles will include a one-year non-transferable VIP ticket. So, so if VIP ticket transferability is more important, then you be sure you get pledges in now. Um, so be sure to do that if you want to do stuff. But you know, additional Sapphire level members will notice additional rewards in your bundles. Um, I don't know what number that is. That's probably over 100 or something like that. So if you got a sapphire bundle, you can't, you, it came with a small castle, but you'll also get a large keep. If you get a ruby bundle, you get a medium castle, but you'll also get a small keep. Emerald, you'll get a large castle, but it will also get a medium key castle. If a diamond, you'll get a citadel, but you'll also get a large castle. And a bloodstone, which is the highest, I think that was like $10,000 or $1,000, maybe. Not 10000 I think it was 1000 You get a palace, but you also get a citadel. Um, lastly, you want to confirm your total purchase counter and something later in June that automatically escalate. Testing phase. What? What is that saying? Uh, we want, you'll be adding a total purchase counter sometime later in June. Uh, so example, if you started true, but ended up spending more than this, or so if you start with a like, review package of $30, and you end up later spending more in the store to get upgrade that, um, you'll be reaching a total of $60. If you get a second, if you pay another $60 for the game, um, you'll be a silver backer. What? Oh, you'll be upgraded to a backer level and receive the title of Edge Inclusion in Beta 1. If you were a silver backer and ended up spending $175 total, you'll be upgraded to a gold level and granted the badge title and inclusion in Alpha 2 and so forth. Okay, so that's it. So, anything new going on with my life? Um, no, my cold should be over, so sorry about this. Everything else will be in the video on Sunday. I'm thinking about making the series bi-weekly, so every other week, just because I'll, it'll be a longer video. So I don't know if you guys want that. If any of you guys want to comment, even though I know none of you do, but if you do, um, please leave a comment saying what your choice is on that, because I know this is probably my most popular series. Um, so I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I shall see you guys later. Bye!